Hello and welcome back to another episode of Advanced RC Adventures. This is a channel where we investigate, explore, build and explain, upgrade and advance Nitro RCs to another level. Come start a new adventure with me. A2RC here with a very special and exciting episode of another iconic and epic, even perhaps a legend engine. This is a Team LC the LC stands for Lamberto Colari, which is not just an individual driver who won worlds or national titles, which he did, but it's actually a family affair. His father, Mauro, did a lot of modifications to all the Team LC engines. And this is a pretty special one. This particular engine is new, but it was on a display car. A lot of um, the writing here on the top of the head is difficult to see, but we have a Team LC logo here, and around the perimeter it says Lombardo Colari Engines. This um, was made in the early 2000s by the manufacturer Serio, an Italian manufacturer. And as I understand it, there were some additional LC um, branded engines before the 2000s made from, uh, by Pico. And then um, throughout the years, there was also a few Novorossi engines that bear the name LC. And as I understand it, the Kalari uh, family is now involved with uh, the new Nova engine manufacturer for some special editions. But we're going to take a look here, we're going to uh, break down the engine, talk about um, some interesting facts about the engine, about the internals, about why a, a formal race engine would have a composite carb, why Serio and um, Team LC decided to do what they did with this particular engine. And it's pretty interesting, so come take the adventure with me. So like most all breakdowns, we're going to take off the carb. There's a traditional six millimeter on the pinch bolt. Let's talk about this carburetor for a second. So it's got a composite body. It's a one, two, three needle carb. The base of the shank here is actually metal and that's uh, molded into um, the composite. It's got a removable um, Venturi. This is a, a 5.5 millimeter Venturi. Low speed needle, high speed needle, inlet nipple all made out of brass. Mid speed third needle, idle adjust, slide carb. Traditional um, butyl boot. Let's set that to the side here. We have SG shaft with a collet. This particular engine we'll see has chrome steel um, front bearing and rear bearing. Let's break in here into um, the back plate and take a look. So all the LC version engines were considered to be in the quote unquote pro class, the race class. And this particular engine is called the LC12 Pro 3. And um, that denotes the um, sleeve having three ports. Let's move the piston up a little bit. Take off this back plate so we can take a look. Back plate is an interference. Notice here the groove. An interference back plate with a nice um, O-ring. There's a little indicator on top for up. This is a, a cast aluminum backplate that's been machined. Take a look here at the internals. Billet rod that's been machined. Brass bushings. Let's break in through the head here. The backplate bolts or M2 and a half. Just 
go ahead and take this head off here. Pop these head bolts out and give these a little measure. These are an M3. by 16 and that's relatively a long head bolt normally they're around 12 to 14 millimeter but that's something a little special they have some additional thread engagement to keep that head down this is a low profile head button style head notice that the um, pocket for the head button has been machined down inside which allows the head to sit lower to have a lower profile and lower center of gravity it's a nice looking head. When it was uh, brand new in box, the gold probably would pop a little bit more, but we've got some nice shine cuts here. This is a unidirectional um, head. That means that air can flow through in multiple different directions. There are some um, directional heads that where it only allow air to flow through the center in one way, but not the other. So that um, helps to keep this race engine a little bit unique. But there is a little cutout here for the um, rear exhaust. So that would denote the rear, but if you need it or wanted to, um, you can put it in different directions and still have airflow. Let's set that to the side here for a second. This is a turbo plug engine. We've got two head shims on this engine. One's aluminum, one is brass. But we've got a nice turbo plug head button. There's no specific um, note or indicator for what rear might be, um, but there are some cutouts for the head bolts as you go around the circumference of the head button itself. Let's pick up the brass head shim and give that a little measure. That's a 0.1 shim. And then take a look here at the aluminum shim. That's a 0.2. So we have a total of um, 0.3 head spacing, which is a pretty traditional, kind of a, a normal setup for um, a 12 size engine to start with. And you obviously can go bigger or smaller depending on what nitro concentration um, you want to run or depending on um, track conditions you can increase or decrease that head shim spacing. Let's pop this sleeve out. We're gonna take a look at this, but what do we see here? Pretty fancy AAC construction engine, aluminum piston, aluminum sleeve, And chrome lining. Let's take a look at that in just a second. We're going to talk about um, some of the pros and cons um, of using the AAC construction engine, but this definitely makes the engine relatively unique. Here's our piston. The rod, it's, or the wrist pin itself, is a captured wrist pin. There's clips on both sides. A very nice, pretty extreme knife edge on the connecting rod itself. This is a billet machine connecting rod. Brass bushings pressed in top and bottom. We have one oil groove up top. It's a nice looking piston. Take off our collet. Let's push out our crank. So this is what I would call the beginnings of um, a standard day today uh, race crank. Nice big bore window. The induction passage from the intake into the crankcase. Big bevel or big fang shark 
cut out on the side. This particular crank is not drilled nor filled. But that leads me to a um, conversation about this is what they call their quote unquote kind of standard race engine. This is a three port and this is what they would call the team version for the LC. It's an AAC construction three port EFRA turbo engine. This um, was specced at 1.5 horsepower at 39,000 RPM is where that went up to and a, a practical RPM was well over 43,000 RPM. But then they had the Morrow Kalari modified and so it takes this engine and they modify the sleeve and the crank and they get up to 1.7 horsepower at a 41,000 RPM range and a practical up to 45,000 K which is pretty astounding um, it definitely brings this race engine into what you would call standard or high caliber race engines of today in um, 2023 like I said we have chrome steel bearing in the rear so let's bring back this sleeve so AAC construction if you're not aware this is an aluminum sleeve it's not common today and um, the idea actually came from way back when um, with airplane engines in order to have lightweight engines for flying and some of the benefits is um, still carried into the race engines to keep um, the, the portion of the engine the sleeve itself lighter weight so why have for example here is a Novorossi C12 brass sleeve compared to the aluminum LC version sleeve why have brass compared to aluminum and what are the pros and cons some of its controversial um, but other pieces are not so let's talk about the aluminum first we mentioned that it's lighter weight the bevel for the pinch has to be machined in or uh, reamed in it's a lot more difficult to compress and create that pinch up top by squeezing so the initial pinch is a lot more difficult to create whereas the brass sleeve they're, they'll machine it, they'll ream it, but they can actually shape it easier because brass is a little bit more malleable. Aluminum, surprisingly, is less expensive per pound compared to brass. So that's a big positive for the aluminum. But one big benefit is that when you talk about the, the piston and the sleeve combo, it will expand and contract at similar rates. Now, the material specifications for the piston are different than the aluminum for the sleeve. There's a lot more silica in the piston itself than the sleeve. But they will expand and contract at a lot more consistent rates compared to having a brass sleeve that is dissimilar in material and will accept heat differently and expand and contract differently than the piston itself. Let's talk about um, brass. The, the brass itself can be um, heavier than the its aluminum kind of sister. And I have a scale here. Let's take a little look. Might be more a little difficult to, to see on camera, but I'll let you know what it weighs. So we're gonna weigh first the aluminum sleeve. And we're in grams here. And we're reading at 6.2 grams for the aluminum sleeve. And then just for comparison, we know it's not 100% perfect apple to apple because I don't have a brass sleeve for this exact engine. But this is a pretty common three port traditional um, Novorossi C12 brass sleeve. So let's measure that. That's 16 grams compared to 
six grams. That's quite a significant difference. And when you're talking about an overall engine weight and um, you can reduce a portion of that engine weight that significantly, that's something um, to really consider for race engines or any engines. So why don't all race engines, especially nowadays, use these AAC construction compared um, to brass? Well, both are chrome lined and that's um, a big positive, but aluminum itself, the material properties of aluminum, it doesn't accept chrome as easily as brass. Outside of copper, brass is the easiest material to chrome line. It takes a lot less material, it takes a lot less manufacturing time to chrome line this brass sleeve compared to aluminum. So this is very expensive to manufacture um, for chrome lining itself. And then when you talk about brass itself, brass is two to three times easier to machine than it is for its aluminum counterpart. Even though aluminum and today's technology, it's a lot easier and more cost effective to machine aluminum, it's still not as easy as its brass sisters. So that's a big benefit to um, brass itself. So there's all these pros and cons and to what manufacturers are going to use, whether it's gonna be an AAC construction or ABC construction. But the AAC definitely is a big contributing factor for a little bit less weight from your engine, but still be able to have the same kind of performance. As I understand it, you may not be able to re-pinch if that's something that you do, which normal racers do not. But where brass sleeves could be re-pinched, aluminum sleeves, it's going to be a lot more difficult and it may be worth just tossing. All right, so let's actually talk about this sleeve a little bit. Let's look at let's look at its features. Here's our exhaust port. We've got some nice big dog ears on the sleeve. Let's move over to one of the transfer ports. We got a nice long fang. Now this is not the modified version. This is what they consider their um, standard LC Team LC and it already comes with this nice big beveled fang going to the transfer ports on both sides. And then we have our boost port here. It's got a nice um, bevel to it. But as I understand, the modified versions are a lot more um, severe. And a, a very nice beveled edge down here at the bottom of the sleeve. It's beautifully made, work of art in itself. Aluminum sleeve for this Team LC 12 Pro 3. I also wanted to, um, while we have the scale out, let's talk a little bit about the carbs. So you might think that um, they're trying to use a composite carb to keep it a little bit lightweight. Well, let's let's talk about that. Let's measure the L Team LC carb. We're at 36 grams. And then what I have here is a very, very similar Nova Rossi all billet machined slide carb that uses a 5.5 millimeter venturi all effectively the same you can swap these out from engine to engine and it will work three needle carb high speed low speed needle there on the slide barrel and the third mid speed here so very very comparable let's take a look at the size itself just side to side very very similar three needle carb all brass high speed needle and nipple and so let's measure these so the composite carb is 36 grams what do you think put down in the comments if you think this all aluminum carb is going to weigh more or less let's find out 35 grams. So in a sense, they're effectively the exact same weight. The composite carb was 36. 
the all aluminum was 35 grams. That makes that billet aluminum one slightly less weight. But as I understand it, um, Team Kalari and Serio Cere made these composite carbs and they ran um, perfectly. But that's because they put a lot more engineering and design into the material as well as to the shape and how they created this uh, metal core inside and molded it all together. And they got outstanding performance from the carb. My guess is that it's a lot more cost effective long run making a composite carb to doing all billet machining um, like this Nova Rossi. So that's why they made the decision to do what they did here. But effectively the carbs are the same performance wise. Before we wrap up this um, overview of this legend of an engine here, there's another piece here that I want to show you. So this is also difficult to see, but this is an original Team LC Touring 10 scale version pipe. This is an EFRA rated 2611 two chamber pipe. They made um, pipes and headers specific for Team LC. And this just goes to a museum kind of status piece with the engine. So we have the Team LC 12 Pro 3 engine with its counterpart, the Team LC EFRA 2611 Touring Pipe combo. In the future, you'll more than likely see this engine getting broken put into a car. Maybe it'll make its way into a Team Magic or maybe an R40 in the future and we'll continue this adventure together. If you enjoy these kinds of engine overviews, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. A lot more still to come here at Advanced RC Adventures. So if you like anything 10 scale nitro and especially touring cars, then this is the place to be. So thanks for taking the adventure with me.